Hi and welcome back in the main stage. Um, in this community we do talk a lot about peering. We often see presentations about mostly slightly bigger internet exchanges. We do see technical slides about existing very, very big uh, peering fabrics. But if you have ever wondered what it takes to rebuild an IXP from scratch, Mart is a senior network engineer, um, network architect, sorry, at um, Annexia by Day, and uh, I night he's part of the operating team of Stuttgart Internet Exchange, and I'm happy to welcome Moritz. Thank you, Tim. Uh, so yeah, uh, me again. First of all, uh, a DNOC matter. I need to apologize to both Tim and Wolfgang for not including them in the heralds. Uh, they're obviously as well heralds, and I just forgot it because I did my slides last minute. Sorry about this. And now on to rebuilding an IXP from scratch. So as you've heard, I have many different, hat, uh, many different hats uh, today, or in this presentation, I'm wearing my Stuttgart Internet Exchange hat. Um, aside from that, as uh, Tim mentioned, I'm a senior network architect at Annexia. Uh, I live in Munich, and before I uh, joined Annexia, I worked for CDN, a data center, and an internet service provider. And you can find me at Momorientes on the internet. So, a uh, quick disclaimer here. My work at Stuttgart AX is voluntary. It's uh, not encouraged or discouraged by any of my current or previous employers, and nor by DNOG EV. So, just to set that clear, this is just Stuttgart AX and no one else. So yeah, what is Stuttgart AX? As Tim mentioned, we're not that big. We don't have terabits of uh, bandwidth. We don't have terabits of connected capacity. We have 20 peers, 109 gigs of connected capacity. And lately we peaked at 5.6 gigs and we hope to peer at, uh, peak at 6 gigs in the near future. If we ever make it to 10 gigs, uh, Arnold Nippe has promised me a bottle of sparkling wine, so I'm very happy uh, to improve the internet exchange. We're currently in four locations, even though, uh, or although only one has a switch, the others are just connected via fiber, and we hope to connect one more in 2020. Legally, behind uh, Stuttgart X is the ISP service, e.g., uh, who runs builds and does the legal part for us, but in the end, the internet exchange is run by volunteers. Uh, currently, six are actively working in it, and we have some more who would chip in if there's their hands needed. So. Why am I here and why is this talk called Rebuilding an IXP from Scratch? Stuttgart X was find, uh, founded in 2005, so we're around for a while, uh, by André Scholz and Winfried, ha uh, Winfried Haug. Winfried later or someone stepped away from the project and André continued it. Um, sadly, in 2015, André passed away way too early and we lost a lot of knowledge, enthusiasm, uh, encouragement, uh, both about our community and the infrastructure we're operating. A group of volunteers, most of them who are still around, kept the lights on, but updates never occurred. We lost uh, quite some access, and we had never sent an invoice before. So even though there was a pricing agreed with all the members and they were happy to pay, we never sent an invoice, and so we didn't have any cash flow. So the only uh, good thing is that we had an amazing community for the whole time, um, which met for bearings regularly. But in 2019, we asked ourselves and the community how we should move forward, because this internet exchange was actually serving a community and people were doing real business over it, so it cannot be run uh, just sitting around there and by hoping everything breaks. But in the end, we we move, wanted to move forward and we had four options. Option one was to hand over the peers to one of the more established IXP operators and uh, looking to expand in our metro. Option two was to rebuild everything, start invoicing and stay independent and to improve our setup once money accumulates. Option three was to find someone local who wants to make it their business and hand it over. And option four, leave it as it is and hope it doesn't break was the last one. Maybe you could have thought of more, but these were the ones we came up with. So option four, as I mentioned, people are doing business over this exchange, hoping it doesn't break, is not viable. Uh, this is not an option for us. We then spoke to our community and asked them uh, what they would think about uh, giving the exchange over to some of the more uh, established IXP operators, and they didn't like the idea. They wanted us to stay independent, they wanted us to do local business, um, but sadly, no one uh, wanted to step up and do it. Um, so we did it. We as a community did it, and ISP Service EG uh, took, the, took the lead for the legal basis. And so, yeah, this is why this talk is called uh, Rebuilding an ISP from Scratch. We basically have to start from scratch. 
what we had to leave behind. Um, some of the, uh, about some of those parts were sad. Some are quite good that, that we have to leave uh, leave them behind. So our switch was a Force 10 E300. Uh, it's end of everything since ages and had backplane errors and it drew a lot of power for the capacity connected. We had to leave behind our complete server infrastructure, which was severely outdated, undocumented, and to most parts we had no access. And we had to leave behind our route servers because access was not easily handleable. We could have gotten into them, but uh, this wasn't possible at the time. And they were insecure. No RPKI, no real validation. For some parts, yes, but after all, insecure. So a few things we could take with us. and. The first thing is probably the most, export, uh, the most important thing when you're starting from scratch. Uh, we had a community, we had 18 peers, and we could take them with us, and they stayed with us. Um, if you're starting from scratch, don't give a shit about the technology. This is easily solvable. Getting people to connect to your IXP is the hard part. So uh, then we could keep our rack and a interesting cabling, to say it very politely. Uh, we could keep our IPv4 and IPv6 address space for the peering LAN. Um, again, if you're rebuilding from scratch, don't worry. Uh, most rears, I'm not sure if all, but RIBE at least has some uh, IP space, also IPv4, reserved for IXPs and will hand it out. And uh, we had, we, we could take along our established domains, but if you're starting from scratch, you don't have an established domain, so just go to fancyx.org and register it with your favorite domain registrar. So, what were our goals? First of all, first and foremost, we wanted to provide a stable platform for peers to exchange traffic. Uh, we wanted to promote local peering and to promote it our local community. To do so, we need a driving factor for this. I will go into more detail later. But for us, a goal was to get CDN caches, uh, etc., or like uh, content providers on the IXP, so it offers actually some value other than the uh, only the networks connected. We wanted to be manners compliant, and uh, this should be a goal for every network, not just only for our IXP. And so we wanted to ensure that our route service, in this case, are secure and reliable. So let's let's go and get into it. Everything at an IXP obviously starts with the switch. Um, we had a Cisco Nexus 5548UP lying around, and. First and foremost, this is not an endorsement. This switch is really painful to automate. It has no really not really good layer two features to securely filter the peering LAN and you don't get SJ net flow or everything around. But as is with cameras, the best camera or the best switch is the one you have lying around. And we had one, well, actually we have multiple, so we have spare parts and we can operate the IXP. We don't know yet where this will be going. We have talked to some vendors yet. Uh, we were still waiting for a bit more money to accumulate, but once we have it, uh, there is the Euro IX wish list uh, or IXP wish list uh, available, which has a huge checklist on features. Uh, people who actually know what it takes to run an IX at scale have uh, uh, have condensed together in this PDF. And so, if you are asking yourself the question, have actually some budget available? Go ahead, check that list, and evaluate your switch against this list. Um, saying this again uh, in, uh, later, but be very careful when choosing your switch. It's the most inflexible part of your IXP, uh, so be sure to take some thought into it before you spend the money. So on the switch port configuration, as I said, we didn't have all the layer 2 security features at hand, but uh, quite a lot actually were there, so we disable all LLDP, we disable all CDP, uh, we Put it. Uh, we make it an edge port, enable BPDU guards, so we don't have uh, layer two control protocols in our peering LAN. Uh, we log every status. Uh, we apply storm control, and we filter for the MAC addresses. So actually, the IX hopefully is stable. Um, on turn up, we place our peers in a quarantine VLAN and dump their port to ensure the site is configured correctly, so we can work a bit around the uh, limited features of IXP or of our switch. Better. All right, so then we needed some servers. We acquired two new servers. Um, this was our first investment. Um, they're using a fairly recent AMD Epic CPU. We're having some RAM in them and a SSD. Um, we're using Proxmox to virtualize there, but again, this doesn't have to be Proxmox. It could KVM and libvirt would do it. Um, anything really that feels comfortable to you would do it. We're using Debian Stable on all VMs, um, not because it's the newest and fancy stuff, um, but because we know how to operate it. So this was a big plus to us. And 
we used salt stack for everything and actually i'm working on getting it in a state where i feel comfortable releasing it so you can have all our salt states uh, to get your ixp started this is not ready yet but follow me on twitter or follow the stuttgart ix account on twitter and eventually we will release the salt states next up is ixp manager um, IXP Manager is a software developed by INEX uh, in Ireland and they're doing an amazing job to manage basically everything you would need for an IXP. It's a single solution to document everything you have. You can get statistics out of it, uh, you can get smoke ping out of it, and it will completely take away the part of creating an IXP uh, a route server configuration and to make it secure. Adding RPKI is a measure of installing your, val uh, your preferred validator and clicking a button. Getting IRRDB filtering, uh, filtering enabled is only the only task you have to do is install BGPQ3 on the server and click the checkbox, and that's it, and that's security for free. Also, IXP Manager offers an API to almost everything. Uh, we use it to automate our DNS infrastructure, but really you can get almost everything out of the API. Then, as mentioned, route servers. Um, we're using BERT v2. Um, the config is generated offsetly, ob obviously, uh, so that not both route servers fail at the same time every 30 minutes by XP Manager. Uh, we are using Routinator 3000 uh, as our RPKI validator on each server. Um, we have upgraded to the latest version, which does the uh, manifest validation correctly. We're using Birdwatcher, uh, which provides a JSON API to our looking glass. You don't need to do this. Um, it is necessary because we wanted another fancier looking glass. IXP Manager works without it. And we're using Bird Exporter from the DNOC community, uh, by, I think by Daniel, thank you very much for this, uh, to monitor it with Prometheus. But again, you also don't need this part. For looking glass, we're looking. Uh, we're using Alice. Alice is a project started by the folks over at Ekix and uh, being continued developing by uh, Dkix right now. So you might be very familiar with this. Uh, we chose the looking glass because to us it felt better than the one um, provided by XP Manager. Um, it queries basically the Birdwatcher API uh, every five minutes, and to or why we chose this setup is also not to have our route servers in the public internet, um, but rather only the looking glass and the looking glass is using cache data. Um, it's also great in assisting users to investigate why their prefix are prefixes are rejected. You can list communities there and um, the users are basically instantly available, uh, inst instantly able to see why their um, prefixes got rejected by a bird. It also offers an API for everything. So then monitoring. Um, please don't follow our way if you don't want to. Uh, we, there is an easier way. It's called Nagios and it integrates easily with uh, IXP Manager. But I don't like Nagios and so I went the Prometheus way. We're using a lot of uh, community exporters here. Node, BERT, Blackbox, Cisco, Nginx, Smokeping and Routinator <coughs> to just get fancy dashboards. Website. Um, so to get people connected to your IXP, you need some sort of website and they should be able to look up the, the best details. Our website is not the best example for how you should do it. But from my point at least, it offers everything an IXP should have. A pricing list, and I know some of the bigger IXPs might disagree here, but I think having a fixed pricing list available on the website actually offers value and transparency. A list of connected peers and maybe even the IXF uh, JSON scheme. This is also a standard by the EuroIX. Um, it also comes for free with IXP Manager. Uh, traffic graphs, if, if you're into that, uh, obviously every IXP needs to have uh, the biggest and best traffic graph, so that's also free with IXP Manager. And for us as Germans, um, we initially had only a German website, but if you're talking to a CDN or a content provider, it helps to have an English website. Then peering DB uh, is the last thing, or one of the last things that came in mind. Uh, as Tio mentioned before in his talk, um, when someone comes to a new country and wants to make a decision where they're going, they're hopefully going to peering DB, and uh, we hoped it, or we wanted to be uh, listed there because it's free advertisement for us. If someone is in the data center we're in, we, we will be listed in the data center as available internet exchanges. And as we're in Stuttgart and the only IXP will be the only one there. So hopefully uh, someone coming to Stuttgart will know that we're there and hopefully connect. 
Um, also, it helps to keep that updated, especially for your route server ASN and your infrastructure ASN, because many people uh, generate peering information directly from PeeringDB. Uh, and also encourage your peers to do the same. Uh, then DNS, um, we set up power DNS with a MySQL backend uh, to forward zones that are managed by hand, uh, for forward zones that are managed by hand, sorry. And <coughs> our reverse zones, as mentioned earlier, are man uh, managed by the IXP manager API. And so peers can basically say, I want my IP in the peering land to be, uh, I don't know, bellevue.stuttgartix.de. And so they have a very nice trace route in the end. So to bring this to a conclusion, IXP Manager is the MVP. This software will basically do everything for you. It has a lot of integrations. We're not using nearly all of them. Um, but really, IXP Manager is the way to go. Education at an IXP is very important. DKIX and Wolfgang have done an amazing job in, in getting that right. DKIX has the DKIX Academy, and we wanted to, to take up on that. <coughs> We're in a smaller region in Stuttgart in, Stuttgart in Germany, um, and most of our peers are just happy if their BGP setup works. They're happy to support the community, but they have never peered before. So uh, Tim, Sebastian Neuner, and I held a four-hour-long workshop on, I think, a Friday. Uh, we had 20 participants there, and during that workshop, we removed 30-plus invalid prefix announcements from the uh, DFC and more to follow. Also, many of our peers never had RPKI enabled or even IRDB filtering. IRDB filtering for smaller providers is actually really hard because they have no automation pipelines. And when you're running a two-man show, uh, IRDB filtering is really the last of your measures. But at least telling those guys about uh, RPKI and telling them how easy it is to set up and to get filters uh, running helped a lot. And some of our peers even didn't have max prefix set up. And even having this improved routing security. Not by a lot, but a very tiny bit. So yeah, um, if you want our resources, they're not perfect, but I think we're happy to share them. Um, but really, there are better ones there. Um, you can go on manners.org. URIX has great documentations. The lovely folks over at NLNOC have a very good documentation, and there's way more. As mentioned, DKIX Academy is also a great resource. And I'm sure if you talk to Wolfgang, he will give you some pointers. So another conclusion. Building an IXP is really straightforward. Basically install IXP Manager, get a few VMs set up, connect everything together, read the good documentation, and you're good to go. We have a very great landscape of open source software we can rely on. Document documentation is also very good. And if it's not, the community is very helpful, uh, especially over at the Alice Looking Glass where we had some issues in the beginning. Think hard before you buy a switch. As mentioned, it's the most inflexible part of your IXP, and it will break stuff if it's uh, broken. Also, something that encouraged to us, uh, or that occurred to me, is that we need more prepackaged software and our repositories for that. Routinator has just released a uh, repository, but at the time we were building this, um, we had to build it our hand uh, by hand. Obviously, also all the Prometheus exporters we have also needed to be uh, built by hand, and we had to set up a Golang build chain, a Rust uh, build chain, and this requires time and knowledge and is not really accessible. I don't know very much about Golang rather than go get something or Rust uh, or no, it's cargo install, whatever. Um, so maybe as a hint to the community, we're having really, really great resources uh, as open source products, but they're not very usable. and. Curl pipe SH is not something I'm willing to do and I refuse to do. And again, route server security to the small IXPs, running IXP manager comes at no cost. I don't see any excuse not to enable IRRDB filtering and RPKI on your IXP. And if you're not doing it, you're basically ignoring routing security and therefore the better or the better parts of the internet. So if you are listening, are operating a small IXP, and uh, have not enabled IRRDB filtering on RPKI in your IXP manager, please do so. So maybe a bit more of the, the outside. Um, to our peers, uh, when we've done a survey about this, uh, CDNs and contents pro content providers are important. 
Uh, we cur they currently reach them via transit, and for them, a wave to Frankfurt plus a rack there plus a port at a big IXP is way too expensive. And from my point of view, uh, remote peering by any of the IXP operators or bigger providers doesn't solve this issue. It just makes it worse. Uh, but that's not got into this discussion. So we've went ahead and talked to many of the bigger. Um, CDNs and content providers and offer them free co-location, free power, free ports and connectivity for cash fill. We will receive one cache by CDN in the near future, in the coming days, uh, 50 gigs of capacity, so that will be nice. Two of them politely declined. Um, one of them requires more traffic, roughly 10 gigs, and another CDN just doesn't have standalone solutions suited for IXPs. Um, this will hopefully be resolved by them, and then they are happy to provide us with one. Seven sadly never answered. Um, some of them who are actually uh, encouraging their uh, people to reach out and connect. So yeah, uh, we've also set up an AS112 node in order for people to uh, have their uh, RFC 1918 uh, reverse queries collected somewhere. And when we turned it on, we had over a thousand queries per second by some of the biggest research universities in Germany uh, reaching our servers. And we're peaking at 4,000 queries per second. And this is all just unconfigured uh, or badly configured resolvers who would otherwise b uh, bother the root name servers. We're also ho uh, looking forward or looking to host root name servers, but sadly currently we don't have the financial abilities to do so. If someone is listening from a root name server provider and wants to get in touch, there will be contact details following. Uh, our peers are also interested in cloud and NTP servers. For cloud, we're currently in communications with some uh, partners. Uh, for NTP, we don't have a solution yet, but maybe in the, in the end we just need to buy an NTP appliance, uh, but this costs money and we'd rather spend it on new switch right now, but in the future, this might be interesting. So that's it, that's it for me. Um, if you are somewhere in the Stuttgart area, please connect with us. We're happy to peer. If you have any questions, I'm sure Tim will relay them. And in the end, you can reach out to ops at Stuttgart.xd or mail at Moritz Wenzel.de to reach me directly. Thank you. So Tim, do I have some questions? Yes, Moritz, thank you very much for that uh, great talk. Um, I've summarized some some questions and uh, I think the most important thing at the beginning is um, we need more pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, it's, it's so being a small IXP is not really that exciting. We don't have big routers, we have one switch. We have two servers. If you want to see a server, go to Google and look up Dell. It's not that exciting, sadly, yet. But once things get inciting, exciting, go over to our Twitter, and I'm happily posting them there. Okay, Twitter. Uh, so uh, pictures and um, dashboards or information on Twitter is always a good idea. Um, how confident are you that the traffic graphs on the website are, you know, for real? <laughs> um, I'm very confident in them because they are generated by MRTG um, from IXP managers. The other uh, source we have is Grafana which is completely independent from MRTG and shows the same. I think people are asking this because there is a delta in our um, uh, sometimes between in and out traffic. And this is due to uh, actually congestion on one of our members interfaces who rec is receiving more than one gig of traffic, but doesn't have the means to upgrade to 10 gigs. So this is why there are sometimes deviations between in and out. And this is caused by traffic being dropped. OK, that's an interesting point. Um, there were some uh, two technical questions about uh, no negotiation and if there is uh, DTB or Nexus, but I think we um, could follow up with those technical questions on Twitter maybe or in the chat. Uh, yeah, just hit me up, but again, I, I'm not very happy about this Nexus. I'm a huge Junior's fanboy and will hopefully get this resolved. If someone has great pointers, feel free. Okay, so solving um, uh, configuration problems by buying new hardware. <laughs> Hope so. <laughs> uh, a very uh, important question from Munich is, um, I'm probably you know the guy, uh, he wants a remote peering to Munich. Um, um, what about that? So our community has talked a lot about this, and we want to keep traffic local. So we will not offer remote peering to our peering LAN. If you want our peering LAN, you have to come to Stuttgart. OK, that's the same. Um, Last uh, question, uh, or not a question, it's an offer. Um, Wolfgang offered um, if Corona will be a way enough um, that uh, traveling is not the problem anymore. Um, he offered to help with the BGB trainings in Stuttgart. And 
Mm, I think that um, would be an, an outlook. What do you think? Uh, when will be the real life bearings, which makes our community uh, so great, um, are um, possible in the future? <laughs> uh, I'm not a virologist and I don't play one on the internet or on TV, so I will <laughs> never ever uh, make an estimate about this. But if we can ever meet up personally again safely, we will have a bearing in Stuttgart and you're all obviously invited. Perfect. Then thank you very much. Hopefully we can meet in real life um, in the near future. And you seem really real to me, but I <laughs> guess we're <laughs> going to <laughs> with the wider audience. And um, yeah, thank you for a great talk. Thank you.